Well, that is the question, isn't it? Every time you face Freeze, the possibility is always there. However, Crepo, the answer will be no, because Giants have respectfully taken that off the table, along with Cassiopeia that's targeted at Soren. LeBlanc for Pepe, it was first picked yesterday, and Jax as well. So, will it must still be playing Jax for it to have been banned in both of this week's games? Or people just don't respect the other picks from Giants enough and they don't want to face the wildcard Jax that Whirlwave could technically still be playing. For all we know, Whirlwave hasn't played that champion in four months. Who knows? Well, we'll find out soon enough, won't we? Uh, let's take a look. What is up and available here? Azir available if they want to go for it. Yeah, Azir and Gragas both first picking first pick Whirlwave with their counterparts being uh, banned out, but Callista picked up by Giants Gaming. Uh, that's pretty early lock-in. Now, Audrey yesterday played Ash. I'm not entirely sure I like it. Big change here. I would love to see uh, Azir Gragas here on the rotation of opening here rules because Gragas and Rek'Sai are allowed as the two aggressive junglers in the game. Rek'Sai is out, you pick Gragas. Cassiopeia and Azir and LeBlanc, really high value so far. Well, LeBlanc's out, Cassiopeia is out. Is Copenhagen Wolves going to go for this or just going to. Well, Evelyn make some available as well if they want to. I mean, Wolves first picked Evelyn yesterday, followed it up with the Maokai Azir, but this time around it's. High fives all around, Crepo, 100%. So what did Giants do in reply? <laughs> Cry, that's what they do, Trevor. <laughs> now, the reason they first picked Evelyn is I think Gragas and Rek'Sai were off the table there. And then Evelyn is valued slightly higher than Sejuani recently because she... The dynamic of the invisible play, the more the more pressure on the enemy right there. But Giants will have to reply here. And Pepe Nero will have to dig deep to find a champion. He has played a lot of Zeref in the past. Zeref actually pokes pretty well in a long-range matchup against his Zero in the mid lane. However, the late game potential of Azir is so destructive because you can siege and put a tower in your back. You have a safety from flanks and it's really, really vital. Well, we'll see what he decides to play for. Copenhagen Wolves off to a strong start in their picks and bans. Giants running through a number of options. And for Giants, you know, the analyst desk was talking about it, how they were, were much of the same, you know, relying on mm -hmm. Pepe Nero to carry. And while they had one or two good flanks, they couldn't pull it off consistently. I'm seeing an eyebrow thrown up as Jarvan is locked in. Could be a flex for top. We've seen Cavashod run it a few times. Could be in the jungle for Frederick. Yeah, very, very peculiar, this Jarvan pickup. If we go back all the way, even before the LCS started, I think the way Giants got into the LCS by, was by picking Jarvan and basically camping mid over and over again and trying to shut that down. Maybe that's the approach they're going for, but I think Gragas just outweighs Jarvin in every aspect of the game so far. Morgana is a flex pick, could be picked mid, but the Black Shield really isn't going to do all that much against this repetitive poke coming out of the Azir, so Giants losing the draft so far. However, they have Kalista and Kalista has been proven to be very strong, but her counterpart Urgot is still open. I don't really know if I think of Freeze when I think of Urgot play, but he does and he locks it in. It's going to be a slightly different style to what we have seen out of Freeze, and it is going to be with that Nautilus. It's something that I remember Kobe at MSI saying, and Jat as well, in fact. It's one of the most oppressive lanes because of the ridiculous amount of CC and uh, tools to keep you in a damage range. This will definitely lock in the Morgana as a support because they'll need the Black Shield to make us to survive somehow. Nautilus Urgot is very short range, though, on the bot lane. Can get punished a little bit, but they're both innately very tanky. In addition, when the jungler comes in, also very tanky on Gragas, so the 3v3 will be a long bloodbath, which Copenhagen Wolves are likely to end up winning on the bot lane. Well, that definitely plays into their favor with that large amount of shields and HP. Giants, a couple seconds left. If we're expecting Callista Morgana, we're expecting that Jarvan to most likely go jungle, especially with the Gnar hover. Mm -hmm. What does Pepe go for? Will it be the Zerath? You mentioned it much earlier in the draft. Don't hey. really know how he's... I don't know how he's going to poke out all those tanks. It's going to be rough. But the tanks are very short range, you have to remember that. You get multiple iterations before they actually reach you. We'll need to have a Righteous Glory on either Gragas or Nautilus, and we'll need very, very clutch Black Shields to stop the Nautilus ulti from knocking somebody up. Otherwise, it's going to get real ugly real quick for Giants Gaming. Lots of executional decision-making here from Giants. The main thing is, we're not seeing a huge amount of growth or development from the Giants squad. It's the same types of champions, it's the same fallback picks. The fact Jax is still being banned out for Giants, it's the same story that only got them into the promotion tournament in the spring splits. Youngback on a non-tank with the hover on Rumble. I like it because three of the members from Copenhagen Wolves, being Gragas, Nautilus and Urgot, are innately very tanky. The Rumble ultimate will the equalizer rather will, will allow Copenhagen Wolves to catch up. Pop your Righteous Glory, pop the Equalizer, slow the Giants gaming lineup down, 
hit one of them. There's only one black shield for five people. They was like, no, I, I want to have it. No, I want to have it. And then Copenhagen Wolves can basically storm them down and win the fight that way. And I think Copenhagen Wolves won this draft super, super hard. Uh, we'll see whether or not they can play it out because Young Buck on one of those carry champions has had very mixed results in the spring split, tending towards struggles. A lot of ability power, magic damage on the side of the Wolves as well. So I expect an early Aegis coming out of Frederick to help mitigate some of that. Yeah, and Frederick definitely the player to watch for the Giant Squad right here. He'll have to shut down some of these lanes early, get a snowball going. Likely that he's going to spend a lot of time mid. Back before Giants entered the LCS, I remember seeing a stat where in his first seven minutes, he spent three of them basically camping around mid lane, trying to shut down the enemy, but it's going to be very predictable. Soren proven to be relatively versatile, and he can play well passively. He doesn't always have to go for these aggressive plays, so if Soren survives, the other lanes should be able to win on their own merit. Well, we'll see if uh, we'll see if they can make that one count. For Frederick, I feel about Jarvin the same way I feel about Lee Sin. That window of opportunity does have a timing element to it, especially when you consider he's against a Gragas, who's just going to do great as the game continues to roll on. Yeah, I agree with that to the sense that Jarvin is very, very telegraphed. His plays are very obvious. Combo, Cataclysm. That that's all you can do, or Cataclysm, flash out, combo maybe. But Lee Sin. A lot of versatility. Great Lee Sin player will surprise you by knowing a champion better than you know it. And you can come from the flank, ward hop, you know, insect you, some fancy cues. Jarvin is a lot more telegraphed, yeah. so it'll be easier to play against, but yeah. We're heading to the rift. We are heading to the rift, and it's the second game here in the summer split. You guys know what to do. There are the team comps on your screens. Hop onto Twitter, hashtag GIA win or hashtag CW win. And let us know who you think is going to win. What do you think, Trev? Who's going to take this one? I don't know, Krepo. You've, you know, you've built up a lot of expectation on the Copenhagen Wolves' shoulders, and I sold them short yesterday. So I'm going to put my faith in the Wolves as well, considering uh, I got a massive pie on my face. <laughs> Some humble pie. Delivered by an invisible Airwax Evelyn. We'll see if they can make the execution count. We did actually see Pepe Nero forgetting to purchase an item. Mm -hmm. Who needs items anyways, when you're the sole one-man army from the Giants game? Copenhagen's moving in, five-man squad, they want some wards. Uh, indicating they definitely want to get a certain lane matchup. Let's we'll see if they can make it work for them. We've seen a couple of teams doing this yesterday. I don't like it. Going for the heavy, heavy invades. We do see a counter in terms of wards. Krepo, tell me why you don't like it. Because now Giants are placing wards. The Copenhagen Wolves have no idea where they are. They can guess that it's happening. It's a pretty standard, but at the same time, Giants has all the oh. knowledge. They even kill one of the wards. I like it even less now. Advantage to the Spaniards plus a Swede. They even killed two wards. Production just whispers sulky in my ear. So two wards down. Yeah. Pepe Nero, two CS. That's why he wasn't shopping. He was trying to get that extra gold. Eking out maybe uh, a whole lot of nonsense is what I'm currently saying. <laughs> so we did see that Godfred and Audrey got deep ward cleared out from Giants. If the lane swap were to happen, if any shenanigans were to take place, where would we be expecting it? Yeah, the, the one question mark I have is around the Gnar Rumble matchup. It, I haven't seen it played too much, but I imagine Gnar wins it really hard, prompting uh, Youngbug to want to double jungler. At the same time, Urgot. Not a fan of Ergo in lane swaps, unless he gets an XP advantage and he can freeze, because then he can at least use that harass potential uh, to poke the enemy champion out of lane if they show up. But I, I don't like this. Showing up to a top lane that's already pushing with Nautilus Urgot, you can't even get the tower down because you're so hard, so short ranged. Uh, Gottfried and Audrey taking down the golems here, inefficiently, if I may add. <laughs> use your AoE, kids. The king of level 2 power spikes. It's PvE. You can do the same thing over and over and over. It has to be optimized, especially at the LCS. But more now, later. I'm sure once uh, the team starts doing some VOD review and hear Krepo calling them out, they'll review their processes. I spent years in solo queue doing those golems over and over and over again. Where exactly did that get you? <laughs> so right here at the cast. <laughs> to to next to you, Trevor. There we go. That, to explain it to everybody at home. That's what I like to hear. So, Pepe Nero on this Zerath into Soren's Azir. You can already see... Quite a sizable CS advantage, yep. actually, in favor of Pepe. That range and early levels keeping Soren down. Remember, there's two wards in there, Trev. Two, two wards? Okay, right. All right well, Minus two. Godfrey with the early uh, roam, is this followed by be, a ward. Is this going to be a thing you're reminding me of all game long now? No, let's drop that ward now. That, I'd, I'd like that. I'd, I'd appreciate that. It is 13 to 8. 
We did see Godfred with the roam, considering he had a free lane, and Young Buck has still yet to show his face around any CS. And definitely, that's what you have to expect. Always ward on your weak side, and then lean towards your strong side if you're playing in the mid lane, because supports, they have the freedom to be a resource you could put anywhere around the map. Four man, uh, yeah, bunching up by Copenhagen Wolves. I don't think Giants is going to teleport on this tower. Well, this reminds me of Fnatic versus Unicorns of Love yesterday, where both teams effectively gave up one half of the map. It ended up leading to Fnatic starting a tower dive several minutes later, getting a strong advantage. Let's see how this continues to play out. I think this is all right because Copenhagen Wolves, as I said earlier, Urgot Nautilus can't really punish the top laner on their own under the tower, so they just remove the tower. Well, problem solved. Remove the problem from the equation. Freeze, however. Is that, is that wave going to pass? A lot of damage. Mm -hmm. being denied. Still about four of those ranged creeps. Towers fall within a couple of seconds of one another. Yeah, not a fan of the way Copenhagen Wolves left that top lane in a position. That's gonna it's gonna be really awkward and give too much farm to Giants. That wave should have bounced back perfectly and denied more farm from Whirlip. He can actually pick up some farm here and uh, get some get ahead of Youngbug. Of course, we'll have to see which of these top laners can have a bigger impact as the game goes on. Obviously, once Youngbug gets access to the equalizer, such a game changer. Frederick, however, going low in this very early Dragon. Remember, it's 5.9. Dragon does a bit more damage at this stage of the game. Both teams actually mess up the bounce. Look at Freeze. He's picking up more CS than he should. That wave should have bounced back towards Zion's side as well. So, I did had a gentleman's agreement. <laughs> no more Freezes, guys. Let's keep those lanes pushing. Keep it interesting. Or they both screwed up. No uh, Freezes for Freeze, as it were. Mm -hmm. 25 CS to 27 of Audrey. Oh, Airwax takes the uh, Dark Binding with him. As we do take a little bit of stats at the moment. Average first dragons. Average dragons per game. Origin, definitely a higher number than Giants. But Giants, they struggled quite a lot in the spring split. It's difficult to get objectives when mm -hmm. you're often behind. I imagine that Origin will go as a Copenhagen Wolves since Origin was not in our last split. But yeah. You know the worst part? I looked at that and I didn't even think. I'm like, oh yeah, it's Origin. It's origin. I was so concerned on saying it. And I'm just like, just say Origin. Not I got, I got the feedback. It'll, I'll stick to Origin. But we're not casting Origin now. So let's get back to Copenhagen Wolf, shall we? Yeah, 12 CS lead here uh, in the mid lane. Azir against Azir. So Pepinero doing well. He's just found himself a comfortable pick, even though LeBlanc and Cassiopeia were out. But Soren, he's he's doing fine. As long as he doesn't drop dead in this lane, it's good. You just want to keep up farming. Azir scales so well into the late game. Yes, there's a lot of poke coming out, but his sieging and his team fights are just so potent, and I really like to pick. I'm a big Azir fanboy. Yeah, he's going to have a lot of time to play with, considering that Nautilus, Urquhart, Kragas, Rumble are all going to be marginally ahead of him. But for the CS advantage Pepinero has built up, Audrey is falling behind. That lane swap going early. Soren takes two shots from Pepinero's ultimate, but both low on mana, even eats the Arcano Pulse. Frederick does have flash available. He he wanted, he wanted to it have badly. a piece of pigeon pie, but he decided against it. We're looking at a dive. Teleports are up, though. They might come in here. Well, Fnatic, be a party. Fnatic made the tower dive work yesterday against Unicorns of Love. Airwax, he gets the body slam into Audrey as Audrey's hopping away. Now Airwax in trouble. First blood goes to Audrey after a Ren stacks get popped. Whirlips teleported in, and this is so messy from the Copenhagen Wolves. Double Young kill. Buck now in trouble. Flash is available, but where is he going to go? He's flashed over the wall. Audrey follows That's through. A That's going to be a triple kill for Audrey. Freeze forced to flash away, and Whirlip trying to chase down. Three for one after a tower dive the Wolves initiated. Very, very telegraph play by the Wolves. And if you do that, you need to be working together, get a single target down immediately, and then get the hell out of there. They, they towered off when a level 6 Gnar, or, or level 5 Gnar, with Rage Bar filled up, had the ability to counter teleport. They took too much damage, and they didn't get to the priority target, Kalista. And if there's one target you really don't want to feed early, it's Audrey and Kalista. And that was Audrey who was down in CS as well, going into that fight. Uh, yeah. 15 CS down, now three kills as well as an advantage and a 600 gold lead. And that's the problem with trying to dive somebody you have a lead on. They're, they're very passive in their in nature at all because they want to back off. He immediately picks up the BF sword on 41 CS. That's after having a Vamp Scepter. That's very... Normally you want 55 CS for that BF sword and that usually means you can barely afford it, but he got a whole lot of gold from that triple, triple kill. First spot and two more kills. Very, very impressive. Seven and a half minutes with a BF Sword and Vamp Scepter. We see two assists on Whirlip's Gnar. He was able, able rather, to teleport down. And Giants have got a 2,000 gold lead before the 10-minute mark. So let's take it back to those predictions, Trev. You went for Copenhagen Wolves, so uh, I'll take uh, I'll take Giants side here. 
Oh, it's a bit late to jump in there. <laughs> that's, I mean, but All right, never mind that, that's fine. You're, you're, you're the new guy on the stage. What a feistiness today, Crapo. All right, let's take a look. CS continues to grow in favor of Pepe Nero. The lanes, honestly, they keep shuffling about because now we see Giants with their duo moving up top. They're focusing on the top outer turrets. And so I have a lot of minions to work with. Though. Reminiscent from yesterday where uh, the Callista, uh, Callista was freezing on a bot lane. Now, Freeze is staying true to his name. He puts the Freeze on bot lane, and this opens up for a cross map objective for Giant in the top lane. They're going to take down this tower and look to go aggressive. Oh, Godfrey doesn't manage to get the knock up. Awax was able to body slam away. But tower number two in favor of Giants, and they're, they're accelerating. They're doing to Wolves what the Wolves did yesterday. And I want to reiterate, I really don't like freezing in the mid game because these teams have evolved. They've gotten better at recognizing where they're losing in a certain part of the map. Instead of moving there, back in the day when somebody's freezing, you would move more resources to push in that lane and reset it. No, it's way smart to just move to the other side of the map and get what they call a cross map objective. And they take down a tower pretty much for free. And that's more gold efficient than the, the minions you lose in that freeze on the bot lane. Well, that's definitely worked out in favor of Giants. As we did see Copenhagen Wolves getting some vision into the Giants half of the map, Pipinero. Trying to get the stun down. Now remember, Dragon number one went to Giants. They took quite a lot of damage for it, but that was early on in the game. And that will be spawning in a minute's time. This vision from Wolves for the time being, but the pressure is obviously coming from Giants towards the Wolves. Yeah, and the Wolves is allowing the pressure because if they keep that bot lane in that position, if you take a look right there, that means Freeze is not... He has no vision around himself. They can't war deep. They can't contest the Dragon area. They're pushed in in mid. They're letting themselves voluntarily be pushed in in the bottom lane. And soon, World will push out the top lane. Triple pressure translates really easy into Dragon Control. So 40 seconds. Giants got themselves four members in the mid lane. No teleport from World. Keep that in mind. But Audrey's in trouble. He's out of position. He gets knocked towards the tower. And Frederick's pushed back as well. Soren manages to get some help on the board as Fra Awax gets the kill. Now, the Flame Spitzer from Youngbike is going to get two kills for the Copenhagen Wolves and Giants. They just bit off more than they can chew in that middle lane. That was absolutely fantastic by the Copenhagen Wolves. Really good ultimate from Arax, knocking people into the tower. Soren amplifies that by doing the same. They don't have a Lee Sin, so they do their best, lead, best cosplay interpretation by insecting two people into the tower, and eventually they pick up Audrey. Soren pays with his life, but meanwhile, on the bot lane, Freeze is still freezing. Too long, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> October fish crack it's like out of nowhere. So this is the replay about those knockouts. Beautiful is your play. Equalizer just yeah, doesn't do too much, slows Godfrey down, but yeah, obvious can't. Godfrey just way out of position. Maybe maybe feeling more confident than he should have. Let's take a look. Giants, they do have positioning on Dragon now. This is number two that they've most likely gonna secure. And they were so confident because they felt they had a man up advantage because Freeze is still stuck in that bot lane. He uh he definitely likes his farm simulator. Oh. Level eight on Freeze right now. Building up uh, quite a big bank of gold to go back and spend, and we'll see where that decides to uh -oh. go. Giants had enough. I want to keep an eye on uh, Frederick, though, because he's picked himself up a Cinder Hulk on this job. And, you know, as far as being telegraphed, he's not had a very big impact in the early game, but he hasn't necessarily needed to. The irony in this game is pretty big. The second this lane actually starts pushing out, Giants moves over and pushes it back in. <laughs> like, nope, I'm fine with you freezing. Go Giving, ahead, mate. Well, on the same token, if Giants can play around the map and they know where Freeze is. Yeah. They keep the pressure there, they rotate back to the middle and they really want this tower. Pepinero is still on half mana, so he'll be fine. I think if this tower ever falls, then Giants start snowballing. Uh, Copenhagen Wolves finding themselves pushed further and further back. They have clawed back some of that gold lead. Aerox is flanking. But Soren's in a lot of trouble. Frederick gets knocked against the wall by the explosive cast. Black Shield is up, but it's Godfrey that caught fire the dredge line. Soren is throwing in those sand soldiers. The slam dunk cataclysm. That's going to lock Aerox in place. Audrey's trying to get away, but now he's on the front line. Freeze looking for the position reverser. He flashed over the wall. He should get Whirlip backwards. Whirlip will be going down. That's a double kill for Soren, the man who was so hurt from the CS deficit and the wolves are clawing back the gold they gave up and giants making the same mistake they made yesterday very telegraphed in their plays copenhagen wolves saw it coming from a mile away actively defended this tower young buck roamed down from the top lane the second time right now freeze joined from the bot lane now because they actually needed him and they, they thwarted the push from giants and giants cost two deaths right there and all the tempo they gained is lost immediately so unfortunate for a team like giants who had two three thousand gold lead the eight nine minute mark their average from the spring split was actually down 200 gold crepo and their average at 20 minutes is to be down 1700 it's just poor decision making it's costing them 
in a lead that they did build up. But let's also take a step back. They are even in gold. Two dragons up at the 30-minute mark. That's pretty good. And they've got a tower advantage, but they've just got to pick their tower battles more intelligently. They have denied the snowball on Audrey, though. He had those three kills picked to the BS, so it hasn't barely touched the creep in the last three or five minutes. So slowing down the game enough for Copenhagen Wolves to scale into the late game. Well, we did see Freeze finally backing. He picked up that Brutalizer, the Man Immune. A couple of cloth armors to boot. Haunting guys for Young Buck has broken the 13 and a half minutes. Hex Drinker for Whirlip. He's uh, not got a lot of gold to work with. Just yep. really scattered itemization yet. Yeah, they got away with it. The Wolves made a very greedy play and it worked. You know, Maybe they had to take a rest to get back into the game with this very long ball increase. This million tower finally going down. Oh, some wave clear from Rumble. Well, I think the Lizer got a couple of the minions, but uh, didn't clear that one out, unfortunately. But on the bot lane at the same time, Trev, they're taking down his towers, trading turrets. They've stalled long enough. 14, 15 minutes, it's okay to start losing towers any earlier, and it opens up the map way too easily, so they start the bleeding. Oh, Pepe Nero, right of the Arcane. One, he's got two more shots, two misses, three flashed away. Pepe Nero really wanted that kill. Put on his dancing shoes and Pepe Nero might, yeah, he might pay for that with his oh, life. Oh, he's going to be so salty after that one because... And rightfully so. Threw everything at Soren. Soren gets away. Now, well, how much damage can Willip get in the top lane tower? Kill averted from the Copenhagen Wolves. But look at the mini-map. Willip is hammering away on that inner turret. As Audrey, he's now going to get caught out. Body slam connects. Audrey's going to get knocked backwards. And Airwax doesn't want too many Ren stacks, but with the assistance of Freeze and Unlimited, that's going to be a dead Callista. And this is why I like Copenhagen Wolves' early draft so much. Kragas is tanky, Urgot is tanky, Nautilus is tanky. It's so hard for Callista to shred through that. Deathly on her own because she needs to proc the passive with the Morgana auto attack to get that 12% max HP down. And if that doesn't work, yeah, there's no, nothing you can do because you're too slow. Remember, we're on 549 because they got nerfed. The back hops, not so far anymore, so she has an even harder time escaping. And yeah, good roam by Copenhagen Wolves. So, giving themselves their seventh kill of the game. Dragon spawning in a minute and a half with the bottom outer turret down. Copenhagen Wolves maybe want to look to that middle lane or move to the river. They've got a good ring of vision inside of Giant's Jungle. I don't know how long ago those wards were placed. Oh, quick nosy. They should survive long enough to at least see this dragon popping up. Give them some information to work with. Yeah, definitely very crucial on the next dragon. You don't want giants to go full Khaleesi right here, Trev, with the two dragons. The Copenhagen Wolves, they're, they're in control again. They lost control early. Uh, call back in. They have a really good fight, like fight comp right now. If they get the 5v5 fight, yeah, it's going to be brutal. Not quite uh, Exodiac, I think it was no, 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 called. No, 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 Not no. quite. I'm still, actually I'm still learning my references, Krepper. Yeah. You gotta you gotta teach me. It's fine, it's time to duel another time. Alright. I hope I don't fall trapped in your uh, cards. Uh -huh. So we do see again Airwax using a defensive body slap away from Godfred's dark bindings. And we seen Godfred on Thresh yesterday. Morgana today, I feel like Morgana's having a little bit more pressure with those dark bindings than his death sentences yesterday. Yeah, definitely uh, definitely easing into the LCS right here. Building the Mikhails as well. He wants to get rid of some of the crowd control. Not exactly sure what he wants to get rid of. Can't get rid of anything. Gragas, some slows from Rumble. You can't get rid of a suppression from Urgot. A snare from Nautilus is at best what you can get rid of. So I'm not sure if I like that build uh, coming out of Godfrey here. But going back to the Dragon, Copenhagen will just really lineup is really good at defending areas. Giants wants to poke in, but if they want to rush in once the Dragon's actually started, the use of a zero ulti defensive uh, Gragas ulti is really strong in terms of disengage and kiting. If you're stagnant in a siege situation, they don't have any answer to the poke from Pepineri, but one, they can just start the dragon right now and keep giants out of there. Copenhagen Wolves got some vision control thanks to that pink ward. The scuttle crab was secured for them, and you can see the wards that were in Giant's Jungle started to time out and fade away. All of a sudden, the Wolves have given up control of the area, and you can see Young Buck up top pushing the wave out. Yeah, they're giving up control of the area in return for a double side lane push. Good answer from Giants. They want to get the mid tower in return, possibly. Let's see how this plays out. Aerox is looking for a flank. They're spreading out. 
Well, we do see that was actually the Fates Call used. The Dark Binding connects. Airwax held onto his flash. Can he get away? This time he does. Soul Shackles doesn't proc, but the Dragon does. Gets a couple of auto attacks down. Here comes Frederick. He gets another knockup onto Airwax. Cataclysm locks three of them inside the cage as the explosive cast boots the Spanish away. We do see Giants now in retreat as Frederick's gone low. Young Buck forced to use Equalizer defensively, and Audrey is slowed down. We do see Godfred landing one more of those Dark Bindings, and nobody has died, yet everybody has gotten involved. And the Dragon is still spitting out fire on the side lane. Audrey wants to channel his inner Khaleesi and secure number three for Giants. Yeah, definitely mother of Dragons here. Tactical mistake. Copenhagen Wolves should not make that mistake. You should not split up with this composition. Just start the Dragon, get Youngbug down here. You've seen that power in numbers, strength in numbers. You don't need to start that double and split push, especially not when your mid tower is vulnerable. Soren can't keep people out on his own. Really don't like what the Wolves did here. If this was second Dragon, maybe worth a shot. But on third Dragon, you, you just want to secure it and get the hell out of there. You see how tanky Gragas was in that situation. He went down really slowly. They could have used that tankiness to their advantage to buy time and get the dragon and then get the hell out of there. Well, one of the interesting stats about getting three dragons in a row, Crepo. 88% win rate if you are the team that has secured the first three. Odds currently stacked in Giants' favor. They're still even in gold. They've yep. got a tower advantage, but the problem is they've not been able to get past that river after those two failed attempts earlier in the game. Yeah, Pepe in area has a whole lot of wave clear, so Airwax is looking for a flank. He wants to knock Pepe into his team, get him down, and then get the tower down. But he gets spotted. Yeah. Frederick did his wolves, spots Airwax. Well, did you see that little vision spirit helping out? Two wards get popped down for double the safety from Giants. And Copenhagen Wolves now, they are the ones continuing the siege. Soren is going to be late to this party. He's in the middle lane. Teleport is available for Whirlib. You can see Young Buck hanging about with the team. He does have equalizer available. And there is none here, though. If they clear this wave, they're fine. This, this is very crucial. These three range creeps is all they have. But Copenhagen Wolves' lineup is so short range. Who is going to hit that tower if Soren's not there? Well, the answer is no one. No one. And Copenhagen Wolves have backed away. Side lanes too, pushing out. Copenhagen Wolves, they're, they're, they have tunnel vision right now. They want that tower, but they have to realize they're not going to get that. Not when Swipe Nera is here, unless they land a really good ultimate combo. Flash swap from Freeze, possibly. Insect from Soren. But look at those waves. They're disappearing before they even get into tower range. And now look at the bot lane, look at the top wave. Giants not making the mistake many teams do by sending their, their top laner to defend this. Now they want pressure to, to get out of that sticky situation and reset the map. Well, the map has been reset and the Copenhagen Wolves are going to pick up that side lane farm. It's Freeze that yells mine, mine, and hits bottom lane. He has got that mirror mana completed. Continuing to build up some tanky stats. Airwax, a little bit of support. Toyed with the idea. Don't start Baron, Giants. That's really, really risky. I don't think I like that. Frederick's not tanky enough. If somebody spots this, this could be the opening for Copenhagen Wolves. At the same time, if nobody spots it... Well, Freeze is a uh, mile and like a half it. away. It's going down so low. You can't do it. Look at the damage. Not enough tanky stats at all. This might cost them a tower. Well, nobody from Wolves seems to be pushing yet. There's a lot of farm to be picked up top and bottom. And Wolves seem to be content just picking up the side lanes. Yeah, this is fine. This gives Wolves, again, more breathing room. You can make that play if you have deep wards in the red jungle and you have absolute knowledge of what Copenhagen Wolves is doing. And you can pretty much fake it out a little bit by sending Pepinera deep into the mid lane, giving the Copenhagen Wolves the illusion that you're not doing Baron. But it was really obvious and there wasn't enough face check threat. Normally, if your entire jungle is ward, you'll be scared of the first rush, scared of the second rush, scared of the third rush, and then you get to Baron. Copenhagen Wolves weren't scared. They could just walk in, place the ward. Oh, these guys are doing Baron? They're half HP? Well, fine, you know, they'll have to base and we get all the pressure again. Giants lost their tempo yet again. Well, the other thing about the Giants, unlike yesterday against Origin, where they tried the flank once, didn't work, tried the flank twice, uh, sorry, tried it once, did work, tried it a second time, didn't work, and then ran out of steam. Mm -hmm. They don't have Outer Towers to push, they tried the Baron play. What's next on their list of tasks to attempt a lead? Poke somebody out and then make a pick. We saw it earlier. Airwax overreached, got caught. Good Cataclysm followed with the Pepinari artillery from very far away. And that's what they want to do. Find one target, lock it down. And what once they're outnumbering, then Audrey can start hopping around and taking down these tanks. But it, it's a long tour. It's going to take a while for Audrey to, to tear through these tanks. And Especially when you consider Freeze has just picked himself up that frozen heart. Mm -hmm. 
little bit more armor being picked up across the board. We see Young Bucks about 100 gold away from that needlessly large rod. But the moment Pepe gets back to mid lane, this minion is going to get cleared out. And that's a lot of poke onto Sorum from just one Arcano Pulse. Yeah, Pepe and are definitely the, the super villain in this Copenhagen Wolf story. <laughs> They're all itemizing armor to get rid of the, the rest of the threats. And then it's all on Pepe Nero, the one magic damage dealer on that team. Bar maybe Morgana, but she's building in One fails. and a half. Well, 1.1 1 .1 at best. <laughs> okay, right. So I'm glad our fractions are in sync now. Pepe Nero, again, charging up at Arcano Pulse. It was just enough to burn through the shield of Freeze. We'll see whether or not we can continue landing those skill shots because you got to admit, one or two missed skill shots and there's opportunities for Wolves to jump on Giants. Oh yeah, all the pressure yet again on Pepe Nero. Definitely in a different role right now. He's not the assassin that we usually see on LeBlanc. He's basically poking over and over and over. And if he lands four or five in a row, then maybe they can find an opening to break through the Wolves' shield. But they're so damn tanky. And eventually, Freeze is going to get some magic resistance. Flash swap on one target. And Giants, their late game is, is rather poor. Find out if we can win it in the mid game then. Giants finally pushing past the river, but look at Airwax on the mini map. He has the flanking opportunity, he has flash available. He's looking for Bevy. The explosive cast is holding on to it for the time being. Freeze wasn't near, and Young Buck needs to back. He's sitting on a lot of gold. 1800 for Young Buck, in fact. And we do see the right of the arcane just for some pressure, but honestly, not finding the targets it needed. Copenhagen Wolves playing passive with a reason. They know Giants is running out of steam, like you said earlier. Can't really get that Baron, can't really get the tower. Ooh, Zip up to the armor. Here they go, though. Frederick wants to find a target, and Soren's going to be able to conquer and displace those sand soldiers of his. Manages to get himself out. They're going on Pepe. All right, Pepe Neri's going to flash from a dredge line. You're not going to get away from that one or the depth charge either. We do see him caught out. That's a flash forward. Airwax gets knocked up. Pepe's got the black shield and somehow he's still alive. Finally gets burned down by the overheating young buck. They've traded mid laner for top laner, but Freeze, he's found Whirlip. Mega Nar is charging. It's not there. It's not enough. Acid Hunter secures the second kill of the fight for the Wolves against the Giants, and Dragon has just spawned. And you see how badly Copenhagen Wolves wants to kill Pepinero. They, they're glad with an opening 4v5 to just take him down, because you know, once he falls, there's nothing Giants can stop them to stop from taking Dragon. Good play by Copenhagen Wolves. Risky, but worth it. And this is the first Dragon on the board. Well, let's see if they can get it first. Hold your horses, Fred. For the Wolves, they are facing a three Dragon Team Giants. Frederick has been good at stealing Dragons in the past, or Barons. Well, it's how they beat Elements, and we'll see if it's going to work. We do see Emperor's Device splitting them up. Airwax flashes forward to the body slam. Soren throws the soldiers forward. You could call one of them Grey Worm if you like. Frederick now on the retreat. Smite is up. Those sand soldiers poking away. Airwax again chasing. He's got no mana, but Soren does, but his soldiers can't reach. Dragon goes back to the pit and is still alive, and Frederick is putting on a dance. Here comes Young Buck, equalizes up. The epic chase continues. Godfred delivers a black shield, and Frederick takes them on a magical journey around the map, gets out clean with the kill and stops the dragon. Yep. Frederick with the Dance of Dragons there doesn't get the steal. Giants really want this one. Uh, it looks like they should be able to secure dragon number four. No, nope, I'm getting ahead of myself again, Crepo. Equalizer comes down. Loses Locking a door. The exit. Whirlip is about to go Meganar. Dragon, 2,000 hit points. He is going to transform. He should be able to slam someone against the wall. It's picked up by Audrey. Dragon number four. The Khaleesi is in the house. He was barely in range for Rend. I don't know what Copenhagen Wolves was doing. Don't hit that dragon. Just kill the guys in the pit. Force them away. Secure that dragon at all costs. Greedy, greedy play here. And so much chaos. 27 minutes, and this is the closest game that we have had out of the seven that we have thus far played. They have been relatively one-sided yesterday. Interesting question is, when a team can get a more impressive lead, can they close the game out? Copenhagen Wolves were great at closing yesterday. Giants struggled to close the few games they had generated leads in the spring split. But they are one dragon away from just potentially winning a team fight. As long as Pepinero has item slots left, there is still hope. There you have it. Pepinero about to pick himself up that uh, Void Staff. He's chunking down Unlimited, no right of the Arcane. So we can't pew 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 anymore. And you see Audrey working his way towards that last Whisper. Crepo, this tower, it might go down. It very well, it might so. Finally, finally a tower it. for Copenhagen Wolves. Three towers to three, 40k to 40k. The only thing separating these teams 
Wow, the only thing coming. It's up thing. small. Four dragons. Just four dragons. Just four dragons. No, gonna, no biggie. I'm gonna make a bold prediction here. Absolutely nothing's gonna happen until the next dragon. Oh, Damn. Right. <laughs> Liar! You have been proven wrong! Godfrey gets pulled backwards, he gets pulled out. Fate's call will save his fate, and despite the attempt from Airwax, nothing further will happen. Right of the Arcane connects with one of three. That is a shocking accuracy. Still counts. Hashtag still counts. But again, you see the power of that Callista saving Godfrey despite not having Flash. All right, all right, serious talk. Audrey has to move to, down to the bot lane to deal with his wave. This opens up a little bit of opportunity. Copenhagen they're getting strong. They can punish face takes harder and harder the stronger they get. So they can actually start looking at getting more Baron control, getting some more vision control. Especially now that that middle tower has fallen. It's a two-step process. You push in the wave all the way, then you spread out, you fan out, and then you get vision behind you or, or at the left side or on the right side. With that middle tower still being up, Copenhagen Wolves could never get their vision deep enough to generate a pick. And this is really vital for them. Let's see if they use that to their advantage or if they're fine stalling, going for the risky fifth dragon. Well, dragons have not been in favor of the wolves at all. They're now a little bit behind in gold. We're coming up to 30 minutes. Neither of these teams have made any inroads past their opponent's outer turrets in an extensive period of time. We do see Airx pushing out the top lane. Freeze also moving up, in fact, to meet this lane. Really. It's all about this dragon. Where is the magic resistance? Don't really understand it. Merc Threads finished on Freeze right here. If you're playing against a giant squad that has carries that fall off over time, and they have this one guy that gets really big and pokes you over and over and over with magic damage, might be wise to build some magic resistance. Let's see who picks it up first on the side of the Wolves. And we're somewhat equally so on the side of Giants, considering they are facing a Azir, a, a Rumble. Mm -hmm. and Even Rumble. Gragas, too. Yep. A much lesser extent. I know that Pepinier has got enough gold to finish that Void Staff, but we'll see when he decides to back and how much he decides to spend. Sitting on 1,800 gold, actually a lot of money to spend across multiple carries. Yeah, Frederick with 1,000 gold. Freeze with 1,300 gold. So, they want to find Pepinier defending up. a tower. They want to flank him going into the team if they can. He's on wave clear duty right now. So, you know, if you build a massive wave and you put some, some of your members around that. One, two, two. Did we miss the first one? I think we missed the first one. Uh, we missed the first one. So Shame on you, Observers. They couldn't follow an, uh, a Zerath ultimate. Quick draw, Pepinero. So yeah, what I was saying, if a big wave stacks, you can Ooh. you can bet your money on it that Pepinero is going to defend that bit. A little bout in the jungle? Well, not this time around. A little body slam, high five, love tap from Awax. Oh. And they get away. Not too much happening. Yeah. It's, it's all about the dragon in 90 seconds. Let's see, 90 Crepo. seconds for me to be wrong. Talk to me about vision, talk to me about setup. You've already explained Wolves have got the potential to zone control, but they didn't do it previously. They actually gave up that area because of the side lanes. Yeah, if they force Giants out, then you can look at a zero ulti like in a Nivea all right? You just use it to keep them out, and then you just disperse, you disappear. Because there's so little damage coming out of Giants, except for Pepinero, which is repetitive poke. If you can keep them out, and you're fine you're going for the 50-50, you can do that, or you need to control the vision that you force a face check. But Pepinero can pretty much check every brush one by one by one by one. So vision advantage, it's not going to do much because we know that both teams are going to show up at this dragon. It's not going to be a surprise. With the amount of farming Pepinero actually did, he's picked himself up a death cap. I guess he didn't need the voice off because there was no MR. That's the other thing to point out. No Righteous Glory. I would really like to see in the Righteous Glory either on Nautilus or Gragas to close the gap and get to Pepinero. Really vital. And Copenhagen Wolves, as of yet, I haven't picked up one. And that goes back to your uh, discussion and pick some bands, Crepo, saying how Copenhagen Wolves need a whole lot of tools to find the Giants' back line. 20 seconds. No one saw that. No one saw It's a big wall, guys. He knew Gragas was there. It was just playing safe. It's, there we go. Acting. Defensive. I like this term, acting. Do you see Blue Buff picked up by Pepinero in the Eye of the Storm? That's a flash forward, but the dredge line misses! We do see the depth charge chasing through, but Black Shield is going to negate it. No Equalizer's been dropped as well. Copenhagen Wolves have chucked a whole lot of tools at the Giants because they want... Airwax the in, in the back. Where is Airwax? The barrel's gone out, it's split Giants up. They have caught Frederick in place, but he's put the Cataclysm down. Right to the Arcane goes out, they've traded Junglers one for one. Sorin has knocked everybody back to the Wolves, but there's just too much damage from Pepinero. Oh. He's Freeze is alive. Through them. Freeze, untouched with the triple. He's got the Quadra. He's looking for more. Can he get it out? 
Not going to be this time round. Will have forced a flash. He's actually going to hop away. Freeze ends up with the triple kill at the end there. A nice pop up. Got me here a bit more excited. But this should be the dragon for the Copenhagen Wolves. Two against one. Despite missing so many ultimates, yeah, they still won the team fight. Very telegraph fight, right? So Copenhagen Wolves wants to catch Pepe. Giants wants to keep Pepe alive. Double teleport coming in. 1,300 hit points. Werlip is trying to get the dragon. Can he pull off the miracle play? No, because he's been forced away. He hops over the wall, got no flash available. Ooh, that boomerang was close. You do not want to beat that guy. They got Sonar, boomerang, steal it. But let's see what happened here. A limited unlucky dredge line. Equalizer doesn't throw Pepe Nero down because he had a black shield. I want to keep my eyes on Arax in this fight because he's going to jump into the back and we didn't see that in the initial replay. Bind is down, so Young Buck, he can't join. Arax is going to go into the spit and try and find Pepe Nero. Let's see what happens. Pepe Nero with the respect flash, really solid flash. Oh. Otherwise, he would have gotten knocked into his team. But watch Soren right here. Well, we do see Godfrey pulled out. Multiple knockups. Actually caught the wall of... Uh Cataclysm, it looks like. So he sees where Pepinera is. He wants to wait until Pepinera joins the fight and get behind him. Dash, dash, flash, and ultimate. Really insane play from Soren. Definitely game-winning play here. Managed to win the team fight. And we're on Baron. Joined back at Baron. Copenhagen Wolves hit a six-minute pause button, but Pepe Nero has got a lot of poke from far. The Baron's gone down, but it's secured by the Copenhagen Wolves at what cost? We do see Freeze. He's got himself Fantastic another kill before the Gnar. Throws everybody against the wall. Eye of the Storm's coming down, and all of the poke damage from Pepe, but Audrey wants to clean up. Three members of the Copenhagen Wolves are down against three members of the Giants, and this has begun bloody. That is our triple kill reversed for AD carries, and an ace against the Copenhagen Wolves. Soul Trap. <laughs> I'm not sure if you want to be in that barrel pit. <laughs> <laughs> Meganar, Pepe Nero, he's literally shooting fish in a barrel. That's what he's doing. Yes, you got the Baron, but you're not going to make it out alive. If you do that Baron, you need an escape plan. You need to get over that wall in the back and get out of there because... Nice attempt, but... Ten seconds, risky, risky play. Ten seconds on those death timers, Crapo, before Giants are forced to back away, but they should get this inhibitor safely. Just as the Wolves get the Dragon, they get the team fight. they give it all away Let's watch that in the again. Baron. Just watch the poke coming out for Pepe Nero. Really solid Sonia's here. Dodges the Q and the R from Frederick. Really good play. Baron goes to Airworks, but they're stuck. They can't get out. Look at Whirlybeat. Four-man Gnarlty because the Sonia's and Youngberg denies the five-man Gnarlty. Yeah, they, basically they're lining up for Pepe Nero. He can just choose his targets one by one by one. Watch, somebody's gonna flash to the right here, or Erex is gonna go over. And Pepe Nero, he wants all those kills. He could go for freeze here, but he doesn't care. His support is dying. No, I'm gonna take out Erex first. I know Aldrich can kite, and then I'm gonna take out freeze after. And push in the base. Really solid play. But yeah, you should never get into that Baron. You should never get into a situation where you make it easy for Pepe Nero to aim, because he's already very good at aiming. Don't make it easier for him. Oh, made easier indeed. 14 to 16. Right, 36 minutes. 3,000 gold, Giants have the advantage. Nobody has Baron buff, because all of the Wolves died after securing it. Dragon will be up in about four or so minutes, ballpark time. And all of a sudden, the Wolves have to redo what took them 30-something minutes to do in the first place, win a Dragon fight. I want to see a Righteous Glory. You need to close that gap. You'll need flashes too, so what we want to watch out for is keep key persons to watch. Body Sun Flash from Aerox, and the Flash Azir Insect, whatever it's called, from Soren. They want to get to Pepe Nero. We'll have to see whether or not Soren can make it happen. We do see some MR being picked up. Airwax has got himself the locket. We do see Unlimited picking up that locket as well. So at least one of the items has been secured. Crepo. Giants are now shoving out this bottom wave, using the poke from Pepe Nero to get onto the inner turret. And the Wolves, they seem somewhat committed to defending it. Because we've don't heard have it's nearly impossible it. when you're behind at this stage. Really, really good poke from Pepe Nero. And Whirly Beat keeping Soren at bay and we said this before, Urgot doesn't have the most wave clear. Dragas wave clear tempers like falls off really hard in Laker because he builds very tank and relies on, on his base values. Yeah, it's getting tricky. Very difficult position for the Copenhagen Wolves. We're going to most likely be one of the longer games we've seen in summon. Freeze takes a big hit from that Arcano Pulse. 
Let's see if uh, Soren can find an entry from the back line. Equalizer's available. Unlimited is going low. Can he get out the nut? The mine? No, he cannot because he's slam dunked down. Soren is going to get a massive knockback. It's followed by a massive gnaw in return. And everybody's flung everywhere. Gottfried is in retreat, but Audrey's going to get himself a kill onto Soren. They've traded some carries in the mid lane. Audrey's still left untouched. Can he survive with the Blade of the Ruined King and the Bloodthirster? He's self-tank sustaining through everything. Got the Ren stacks piling up as he jumps onto Airwax. Ren is going to be enough. Now he turns his attention to Young back. The Quadra kill comes in for Audrey, and the late-game Callista dances around the wall. You can kill Pepe Nero, but don't forget about Audrey. Remember that triple kill early in the game. He started snowballing, and he finally has four items, and he cleaned that, up, that fight up Steelback style. They're he was up. the janitor for Giants. Are they going to end this game? It looks like it. There's a super minion in the base, but Audrey is tanking the Death Star laser. He manages to survive and get rid of the aggro. 15 seconds before Freeze is up. This might be the game-winning push. Giants are onto the sexist second Nexus turret. They're onto the Nexus. What a tongue twister. And Audrey at 11, 3 and 8 is going to win the game for Giants. Yes, we'll be in. Right, I'm gonna stop making predictions with Copenhagen Wolves. Yep. What a game. What a game indeed. Yeah, Audrey a little revitalized. Now they has got newfound confidence. Got that triple kill on the dive, <laughs> survived these fights kind of pretty well. Definitely carried that last side after Pepe Nero got thrown into his team. I just want to commend both mid laners. I think Sword did some some really solid moves here. I think Pepe Nero's poke was definitely what kept Giants in the game. They lost their tempo though, twice. They need to learn to keep the tempo because Giants, they can get ahead. They showed it. They did. Just as I thought this game was going to drag out a little while longer, it doesn't. We see the Copenhagen Wolves in their customary huddle. Win or loss. A group of guys that do stick together. And, you know, I think this game really highlighted how decision making impacts the matchup because there was not a huge amount of mechanical oh misplays but rather being in the right position picking the right fights that's what matters you can be the best mechanical player in the league if you don't know where you're going a smart team will outplay you and, and we saw it on both sides of the coin here both teams kind of tunnel visioned a bit too much at some points but did some really nice map moves on the other yeah. side uh, giants played their competition composition rather really well uh, relied on pepinero but then Everybody just forgot about Audrey and yeah. showed up in the middle. Hey guys, I'm still alive. I have four items, played on King. Do a lot of damage. It's quite nice when you do have that team style where it's like Pepe Nero carries. If Pepe Nero doesn't carry, we don't win. And everyone goes, kill Pepe, kill Pepe. And Audrey's like, hey, no one's targeting me. No one's throwing anything my way. We, we say how Giants almost becomes predictable in every way. Everything is around Pepe. When you're playing against Giants, yep. everybody's going to try and kill Pepe. So it's, it's a double-edged sword, but yeah. And Unfortunate. The, I think the, the B word strikes again. After the dragon fight, Copenhagen Wolves, they stall out. They give themselves an extra six minutes of life. You know, four dragons to one. They go, let's rush Baron. We, you know, we jumped into it just as giants were rocking up there to poke them down. And you have to question, is that the call that cost Wolves the game? Is that the call that completely gave giants, you know, all of the control back? I mean, it, it could be the one drop that let the bucket overflow. Yeah. Because mistakes were already made, but definitely... Going into that Baron pit without an escape plan, you need to know what you do with the Baron. You need to think two steps ahead. A really solid team will always think two steps ahead. Not, okay, one step Baron. And then, like, well, then what, are we fighting? Are we getting out? Uh, we're stuck in this pit. They have a Gnar. It's going to be relatively easy to, in any of the walls around us, we can get pinned. <laughs> Pepe Nero can literally shoot fish in a barrel. Uh, and he has insane accuracy. I don't think we say that enough because we're watching Zeref. It's like, I oh, yeah, hit Q, it hits W, hits E. But it's... I've tried it. It's not that easy, guys. It's also true because every time we looked at Pepe Nero, we were making a little bit of jokes about the ultimates, the rights of arcanes that we hit one in three. But we didn't necessarily praise just how many arcane impulses he hit, how many no. stuns he connected with, all of the other skill shots that you know, fall by the wayside because they're not as fancy as the ultimate. Yeah, and the repetitive damage coming out, especially with that Ludens, definitely kept Giants in the game, kept the, the wave clear up. Really important. They... It took Wolves a really long time to get some of these objectives, some of these towers. Yes, one, due to the nature of their composition, but two, due to immaculate wave clear coming out of uh, Pepe's hands with the Zeref, and he was targeted. LeBlanc was out. Yep. Cassiopeia was out for Soren. We were kind of guessing a zero was going to be picked up, and we were guessing, you know, what was he going to pick, and Zeref worked out. 
No, I definitely did. Definitely give some interesting questions to the rest of the summer split after seeing these two teams. So for a closer look at how Giants picked up their first win in the split, we're going to hand it over to the analyst desk.